this one for me is like, uh, it's one of those verses that like I've read a lot in my life. And I know that, um, for example, like my best friend Bryce, this is one of his favorite verses, um, something that he really holds to as well. And as I was growing up a Christian, like this is a verse that I really clung to because I really felt like in, in certain areas of my life, I was kind of shut down because of my age, right? Mm. And so we're going to jump into this. I have some different things that I want to kind of start the conversation off with when it comes to this um, in terms of like, you know, what this is actually talking about and, and where we go from here. But anyway, let me read this verse and we'll kind of jump into it. So we're going to go to 1 Timothy 4.12 here. Let no one despise you for your youth. But set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity, until I come. Devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which is given you by prof- which was given you uh, by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things. Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so you will save both yourself and your hearers. So this for me was such a huge verse because it changes the way that I think about how I am as a, as a young Christian, right? So in terms of being a young Christian, like I think of everything that went into, you know, me being saved in the first place and the Mm -hmm. the mentors that I had there and the people that were around me. And, you know, when I was like 15, 16, 17 years old, I felt like, you know, um, Faith wise, maybe I was stronger than most of the people in the church, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I felt like God was really calling me towards something, mm-hmm. you know, especially as I got older into college and all of that. Like, I started to realize that, like, people are messed up, you know, <laughs> like the adults in the church definitely don't have it together, yeah. right? And they don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. A- and a lot of them just have really bad ideas theologically and everything yeah. else, right? Um, and so for me, like, I started to dive into this world of like, okay, God, like, what do you want me to do? How could I possibly affect the world? And this verse to me really, you know, stuck out to me, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and how am I supposed to work in ministry, right? Yeah. But that also brought me to the discussion of maturity in ministry. And so it's not just my age and how mature I am in my age, but mature I am in my faith, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and how does that affect your relationships with people? How does how do, how does God walk you through those sort of things? Mm-hmm. Um and so this verse for me is really, really important to that, showing that Timothy, who is who is a pupil of Paul, mm-hmm. right? Um, he is being encouraged by Paul mm-hmm. to to not allow people to look down on him because of his age, but actually to be the best among them, right? To to set them an example above everybody else, right? And to, that he's really called to lead in in the ministry sense. Um, and so it really, really resonated with me. But what do you think about this verse overall? Yeah, I love it. It's it's not just a uh, it's not just about age. It's also like don't neglect the gift that is in you, right? Yep. And then practice these things. Be committed to them. Like something that we still need to practice. Like you said, it's not just about age maturity, but spiritual maturity. Keep growing. Keep yep. digging in. Keep going in. Um and then I also think about the the mentors I have, right? Like don't neglect these things, right? Like pay close attention to your life and your teaching. Like this is stuff that I, w- I also like, I want to be like Paul and tell this to, to my mentors. Yeah. Right. So I, that's why it hit me, um, hard to that. Yeah. yeah th- this, this came up, I think, especially in, in our con- conversing, right? <laughs> I imagine it this way because you probably have a way different look on this than I did because when you were young, like when you were in your teens, for example, like you weren't a Christian. Right. And so for me, like this, brings me back to when I was like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Like that's the age that I really started to understand. Like God has a call on my life. Gotcha. Right. Uh And so for you, like I get that you're seeing it as like a mentor sort of like you're seeing it from Paul's point of view. Right. I'm seeing it from Timothy's point of view, a hundred percent because I had these other mentors that were pouring into me and, and teaching me to be better, right. To teaching me to be more um, faith filled and, and more, Mm. um, you know, obedient to what God wanted me to do. And so for me, like I I saw those gifts being built over time, whether it be musically or um, theologically or, or whatever it is. Right. Um, And, and God kept on building those things over in me over and over and over again. And I always like always since I was like 12, like 11 saw myself as a leader in the church, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm. And, and so, and so for me, like I always saw myself in that way because when I was in youth, right. When I started in in youth, um, 
we often were the people who were most excited about ministry events. We often mm-hmm. were the ones who were most excited to serve God. Like your youth group? Yeah. Like your youth group class? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> the people who are in our youth group, right? Yeah. Like we would do things because we were so excited to serve in ministry, right? Mm-hmm. Because we knew what God was doing and we saw it over and over and over again in different ways, right? Um, and so like I was so passionate about leading my youth group, about being a leader in the youth group, about um, making sure that we were going in the right way. Not that I did everything perfectly, right? Yeah. We talk about this all the time. Of course I messed up. Of course I sinned. Of course, like everybody's broken, right? Um, but I always saw myself in this way so that when I was, um, you know, put in the limelight, so to speak, people would be able to see my heart for God, mm-hmm. right? Not not so that I would be glorified, but so that God would be glorified, right. you know? Yeah. But then, again, this is like the third portion of this conversation is like, but then I go from, um, you know, wanting to serve God with the best of my ability, honestly and earnestly, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and But then people kind of come into the picture, right? Mm-hmm. Because they'll come to you and they'll say, oh, you're so amazing. Like you've done, you've done so many great things or you have such a great heart for God, right? Mm-hmm. And all these things. And it's like, that I think is the most damaging thing. Like it's not that they can't, give you yeah, praise right but but it allows but it allows pride to come in sure, right sure i can see that and so for me like i i didn't struggle with the pride piece of it it was more annoying than anything <laughs> because because what it did is it, it didn't voice it didn't bolster my pride it encouraged my fear of failure oh you see what i'm saying yeah and so for me like I got to this point where like I was serving God. I was a leader in the church. People recognized that I was doing that. Right. Mm-hmm. Not me alone, but they saw, they saw when I was in those positions. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially when I started leading like youth band and I started like building, building up what we needed to build up and doing these different things. Right. Yeah. Everybody had this image of me of like, um, Oh, this is the good kid, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so when I did make a mistake, it hit 10 times harder. When I, when I did fall, it hit 10 times harder. And, and that carried over even to when we got married, yeah. right? Like we get married and you have this image of me of, oh, this guy's perfect. He yeah, can't, sure he can't make that. any mistakes. Right. And so then you build me up to be on this pedestal of like, of, of something that I could but never. But you were the angel <laughs> that I married. And then, and then you weren't. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But it's, it's that same mentality of like, like now I get built up into this thing that I ha- I can never live up to, right? Yeah. So where does that leave me? It leaves me with a massive fear of failure. So the first time that I really truly like failed you, mm-hmm. right? Like it was a massive thing in our marriage, oh, and yeah. and we obviously like we had a huge huge issues, and mm-hmm. and we went through that, and like I wasn't claiming that like everything I was doing was okay. I was I was mournful of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like I knew like that I was that I was broken, and that I I should be doing better. Mm -hmm, Right. mm -hmm. But again, that fear of failure leads me to hide things. It leads me to, um, to, you know, put these things in the closet. And so like, for me, like I, that's what I really struggled with as, as a young Christian. Yeah. Are you enjoying this podcast so far? If so, they would really help us out if you would like, subscribe, share, whatever you need to do on the platform that you're listening on. And if you're on podcast platforms, please rate us five stars. That would really help a lot. All that to say, like, we need to encourage those who are young, but also give a realistic view of what's, what actually is happening. How do you right? do that? I think, I think the most damaging thing, right? It's not the encouragement. It's, it's the, the realistic look at the world and how we encounter that and how we walk through that. So for example, one of the things that I always tell youth when I talk to them now, because it's what I dealt with forever is just don't have any secrets. Like have zero secrets. Yeah. You can tell me whatever you want to tell me because for my entire life, I felt like I was carrying a backpack of secrets, mm. right? Whether it be lust or, or whatever else I was struggling with, right? Like that was the biggest thing in, in my youth being a, an American male, right? Mm. Um, that was generally the biggest thing that I struggled with was pornography or lust or, or whatever else. Um, but, <clears throat> but for me, like I I'll always, always, always had this, backpack of secrets that I was like trying to hide from people. Right. Mm -hmm. While I was working in God's ministry, while he was calling me to do certain things and and all of that. Right. Um, it's not that I was living in that life, but I would fall. Right. And then I would have issues and I would see the consequences of that and everything else. Right. But when we got married 
and I finally like relieved all those things, right? Like we talked about everything, like you know everything, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there is nothing in the past several years of our marriage that I've hidden from you, right? Yeah. Like there's nothing that I've I've had to like hide in a backpack and be like, oh, I'm carrying this, this sin weight, right? Yeah. That one thing has been the most freeing thing in my life, right? Yeah. Because then I can focus on being a leader, right? I can focus on increasing my gifts and practicing them. And I can focus on being the person that God wants me to be, right? Right. And again, I, I, I'm still young-ish, right? Like I just turned 30. Um, and so in terms of the people you that just, we're... You, you know. <laughs> in terms of the people that we're around all the time, we are still pretty much the youngest people. Okay. Except for the youth, obviously. And so for us, like we're still in that phase of like, yeah, we're still getting going in life, you know, like we're still figuring things out. We're still going, we're still finding our footing. And, and so for me, even now, like I see, I see the foundation that God has built on this and seeing the next 10 years of where we're going to be Mm -hmm. then. And it's like, God has set us up perfectly for what we need to do now. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, because he has allowed us to, um, he has allowed us to set an example in speech and conduct and love and faith and purity. Right. And so we're trying to walk in those things so that we can be a great example for, right. So, yeah, anyway, that's my thoughts about it. And, and, and it is interesting how you go towards like the Paul side of things though. Yeah, I do go towards the Paul side of things, but I did feel, I feel like I related to this when I was in my, when I first became a Christian, um, because I was 22 or 23. Yeah. 22 probably um, when I became a Christian. And so I did feel this because it felt like sometimes the leadership would be like looking down upon me or whatever. And and I, I was a newer Christian, but at the same time, as soon as I became a Christian, I went all in. So like, like you said recently, like it was like a fire hose and like I took in all this information, uh, fire hydrant, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and, and it was, it was, it was hard for a little bit. Um, and then I became more of an adult when I hit 30. <laughs> <laughs> Is that when? That's when you became more of an adult? No, I'm still immature. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be 35 this year. Yeah. Get wrecked. Anyway, my encouragement to you guys is like, man, um, don't let anybody look down on you because you're young or because you're old or because you're whatever, right? You're your skin Older. tone, <laughs> okay, old. Um, your skin tone, um, where you grew up, your education level, like none of that matters, right? What you should be doing is trying to outdo one another in righteousness, as we see later on in scripture, right? That's what we really want to try to do. We we, we want to try to outdo outdo one another in righteousness because that is the goal. The goal is obedience to God. The goal is doing our very best to whatever God wants us to do. So, yeah, um, I, I love that verse and, and I hold to it for sure because it's not just the looking down on you because you're young, but how I can be an example. And it shows me, it shows me I need to be an example in love. I need to be an example in my speech, in my conduct, in my faith, and in my purity. And, and so those things I really want to hold on to, right? Um, how am I showing people that I'm a follower of Christ, Right. This YouTube channel is part of that for me. It's not, it's not just for me to show people, Hey, look, I can read the Bible, (laughs) but, um, that is part of it to show people. This is what it looks like to be excited about scripture, right? To be an example of that. And so, yeah, I love it. If you want to check out this full episode, you can do that on patreon.com slash the snipe life. This is the best way to help us to support what we're doing here on the better, not easy channel. Thank you very much. That following Jesus is better, not easy.